David. Peter Atkins, you're a physical chemist, but you've produced this book called On Being. Isn't that a little philosophical for a scientist? Well, philosophers don't say very much that's interesting, and you're certainly not very reliable, because they just sit there sort of thinking about what the world should be like. But what scientists do is going out into the world doing experiments and discovering what it is actually like. So it's much more interesting, I think, and much more convincing to listen to a, to a scientist talking about the great questions of existence than it is to a philosopher. Do you get angry with philosophers and people who promote religion? Does it make you cross? Well, uh, there are two questions there. I, I think um, um, philosophers are professional pessimists, um, as they should be, but I don't think they should be allowed to dissuade us from trying to answer using the techniques of the scientific method. Um, the great questions of existence, you know, going out into the world and seeing where it came from, what, how things happen, how the biosphere operates, what happens after you die, what happens in the long-term future of the universe. So... Um, it's only scientists who can answer that sort of question. Um, but the second half of your question, the religious bit, yeah, it does make me angry because um, you know, religious explanations are explanations by assertion that, that um, refer, that take their authority from ancient texts, really. And people 2,000 years ago hadn't got a clue what was going on in the universe or how it worked. And so why we should take their ideas now as the basis for understanding it is, is beyond me. But are you saying that it's all right to take your ideas because your insights are informed by the scientific method, which is more in, in, inherently more rational? Yeah. What's wrong with rationality? I mean, I... <laughs> I think you know the the whole the, the battle between science and religion is one between irrationality, sentiment, if you like, and rationality. Okay. Yes. And but. and 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 humanity should be proud that it has got to the point where it can say, enough is enough. Let's get rid of all this sentiment, sentimental understanding of the world. Let's apply this extraordinary technique that humanity itself has stumbled upon, the scientific method, and apply that to the really interesting questions. Not the questions about how much acid does it take to titrate this base, but where did it all come from? But you see, as I listen to you, and I see the twinkle in your eye, and I see you being exercised, and I can see your brain working, I am conscious, you are, con you are conscious. Can your book give me any clue as to how that most mystical of operations works? No. But what I hope the book does is saying that there are really interesting questions, some of which I answer, some of which I say are simply fascinating, and science, in principle, has the a technique that will enable us to answer them. And consciousness is one of them. I mean, consciousness... Well, I, I think there are two seriously difficult questions that science is grappling with but has not yet solved. One is where it all came from. How can something come from nothing? A deeply interesting question, and one which I believe is within the, the ability, within the grasp of science to, to answer, but it has not yet and the other is the nature of consciousness. What is consciousness? And I do explore the way that that might be answered, but I certainly wouldn't claim that we have yet answered it. But religion isn't going to answer it. Science has the prospect of doing so. Do you have this experience that every day when you wake up and you're a little bit older, you're just that little bit more scared of dying? Um... Yes, I think so, that, but simply because it's getting closer not because I'm fearful of what there is after it. Will your book offer, offer comfort or insight or entertainment? Certainly entertainment, because what I wanted to do is to write about these weighty matters in a sort of light-hearted way. So I, I hope that there will be the occasional belly laugh. Um, uh, enlightenment, certainly because that is what science is all about. Science is the great illuminator. 
Um, what was your first one? I forgot. No, so yeah. interested in your answers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, will it, will, it, will it make us feel depressed about? Um, essentially, that's what you were asking. Because you know, obviously, I think that the only thing there is is the material world, and there is no spiritual world that is not related to the material world. I think the message there is to do carpe diem. And just there is a thought that if you are an atheist like you, you have a miserable time, do you? Oh, yes. All of us has a pretty miserable time, but it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, I, I, I think um, um, the joy that one can get through understanding the way the world works and the joy one can get from knowing how it all hangs together, beginning to see that one can understand where it all came from and where it's all going. That's a deep and lasting joy. And it's my pleasure to attempt to share that. Peter Atkins, lovely, thank you. Pleasure.